Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ and today I'm going to talk about how you can exercise your money. For many people, the only physical activity they may have is actually their job. So if you're not working, of course, you're not making money. You're not being as active. And for many others, if you're working from home now, you're probably being even less active just because you don't have to leave your house. Now, there are others who are active no matter if it's related to their job or if it's in addition to their job by you know, specifically going to a gym to exercise or maybe participating in a sport league. Uh, that's something that they like to do because they like to exercise, they like to stay in shape, they like to be fit. So what happens when you're not active? Now, when you're not active, as far as your muscles, your muscles may atrophy, they'll lose power, they'll lose muscle mass, and you're not able to do a lot of the things that you were able to do that you were able to do when you're younger or maybe when you're more consistently exercising. Well, just like humans, money can be stagnant and it can lose strength as well. Except for with money, the loss of strength also called loss of purchasing power is known as inflation. And over time, if your money is not doing anything to grow or to stay strong, inflation will degrade the value of your money. And then a year, two, five, 10 years from now, if you haven't consistently been exercising your money or consistently working your money, then the dollars that you own, that you've saved, won't have as much value as they did when you first put them in your bank account. And if you really think about it, money really has no value if it doesn't have any movement. You could sit $100 on your desk. If you don't do anything with that $100, then it essentially has no value. You have to actually use it by either spending it to buy an asset or to buy food or to buy a home or to invest it in something or to use it to purchase a service for it to then actually have value for you. And so money in your pocket or sitting at your home, it just has the potential to do something else in the future. But not only that, you could also use that money to purchase something that loses value immediately. Like when you buy food, although that is something you need, you need to eat, of course, but as soon as you eat it, most of the value, that the potential value that you would have gotten from the food, you've already gotten it and you can't create more value after you've eaten the food. Now, what you can do is, of course, the food gives you strength. You'll be able to exercise. You'll be able to work. You'll be able to do other things that could create more value, but that food itself is gone. It no longer has any value once you've digested it and until your next meal once you're hungry again. And while you can't directly eat your money, it also can't keep you warm at night. And if you were to burn the money in order to keep yourself warm, then of course that money has lost its value and you can't do anything else with it in the future. But when you actually do use it, whether it's to exchange for a good or a service or to invest it or save it and get some type of return on your savings, a dollar actually has an infinite usage. Now, when you put in your savings account, it can gain money there. You can then take the money out of your savings account. You can invest it in a property. You can invest it in an equity like the stock market or, the, or a bond. Or you could literally pass it back and forth between you and another person that has an item that you want. So if, let's say you have an apple, someone has an orange, you want to buy the orange from them, you give them the dollar, they give you the orange, and then they're like, hey, I really like your apple. They give you the dollar back to buy the apple and you give them the apple. This exchange can go on literally infinitely as long as someone has something that you want and you have something that they want and that they're willing to give you money for. And because it has infinite usage and it's not a human being, of course, it's not a living being, it actually never gets tired. And so you can use that dollar and you can work it 24 seven. Your dollar will never get tired. It will never have to take a lunch break. It will never complain about too much work. And in fact, if you treat your money right, it will bring more dollars back to you that you can then also put to work just like your original dollar or a hundred or a thousand dollars that you used to gain more money. On the other hand, you personally will get tired if you were to work a second or third job, depending on what that job is, especially if you have a physically stressful job, but also if you have a mentally stressful job as well. But there's only a certain amount of hours in a day that you can actually work and function for a long term. There's no way that you're going to be able to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and be able to function properly at whatever your job actually is. And so at minimum, you're probably going to need at least four to six hours of sleep. Some people survive off four hours of sleep. Most people probably should get around eight hours of sleep, but most people are usually in that maybe six to eight hour range of sleep every night. And so while you're sleeping, your money could actually be working 
if you give it a job. And not only that, but while you can't be in more than one place at a time, your money actually can. So you can have your money do multiple jobs or you can have your money doing multiple exercises and staying physically fit by investing in different asset classes or putting your money into different asset vehicles in order to bring back more money for you and so today i'm going to talk about just you know five asset classes that you can use to either exercise your money or to give your money a job and i'll give an analogy for both in the different asset classes that i mentioned and try to compare them to what it would look like if it was an exercise or what it would look like if it was a job. And so the first one I wanna talk about is a savings account. Now, most people have a savings account or at least they have a checking account and some of those checking accounts or savings accounts may actually provide you with an interest rate in order for you to make a little bit of money off of the money that you hold in your account. However, a savings account or a checking account that may provide interest, it's more like taking a walk when you think about it as far as exercise. Or maybe it's a minimum wage paying job or an entry level job that maybe you get fresh out of high school or, or maybe even fresh out of college. And so it's not a well paying job, but it is something, it's better than not having a job at all. Just like if you were to take a walk, it's better than not doing any exercise at all. Having a savings account is something that you should have at the very minimum for your emergency fund. But if you have additional money as well and you're not willing to risk it, you're not willing to take those extra steps, that extra effort, like maybe taking a jog or going for a run, then a savings account is something that you should put your money in. But if you wanna make a little bit more money off of your savings, off of the additional cash, and put that money to work a little bit harder, then you can invest in bonds. Now I would consider bonds like going for a light jog on a regular basis, or having a steady salary that's not minimum wage, but not yet something that you would wanna stick with for your career. And so with bonds, while they don't provide a lot of growth, like the next topic that I'm gonna talk about in this video, but they do provide a steady income in the form of coupon payments. And so when you purchase a bond, it'll have a specific percentage that is called a coupon. And that's essentially what you're paid every six months, depending on how often that specific bond pays out its coupon payments. And on average, that's probably three to 5% that you can make from the bond. Now, if you wanted to take a step up, maybe you would wanna go on a light run, you know, running a little bit faster or maybe jogging on more of a regular basis. Or if you wanna get that steady nine to five that has a good salary, a good middle income, then you might wanna get into alternate investing like with real estate investing. Now, if you think about real estate, if you were to rent out your home, you would get steady income each month from the person who's living in that home. And more than likely, they're probably not gonna move very often, especially if you have a nice home that you're renting out. It's in an area with good schools and there's a lot of amenities in that area. And more than likely, many families aren't gonna be moving every year. So you can essentially count on that income every month for maybe years to come. But of course, like with any job, even if it is a steady nine to five with a good company, or even if you are running on a regular basis, normal exercise, it doesn't mean that you could not lose that job or you could hurt yourself when going for that run and that could stop some of your income. But real estate investing and investing in other alternative investments is a good next step and a higher consistent pay that you would get from real estate investing than you might with bonds. And so the next step up, is stock investing. Now stock investing would be like playing a sport consistently. You know, there are many different sports that you could play from playing table tennis to actual real tennis on a court or playing basketball, playing football, maybe even playing rugby. There's a wide variety of different sports that you could play. And of course, depending on the sport that you choose, there could be a, a higher or lower level of activity. And so you can think of that just like the stock market. There are so many different stocks available for you to invest in. Some may have large growth rates that are more consistent, while others may have lower growth rates that aren't as consistent or maybe they are consistent and they pay a dividend each month and that dividend could be low or it could be high but there are so many different things or so many different companies to choose from in the stock market that you can find the right stock or the right sport for you to play within the stock market and when comparing it to the job market 
It could be like a, a high paying job or it could also be a lower paying job, but you know that the job is gonna be there. It's with a very reputable company. You know that your job security is good and so maybe you accept lower pay for the job security. Or it could be like a high growth sales company where you could get really high growth, you can make a lot of money, but there's also the chance that maybe you get fired because there's a low retention rate with that job, or that if you don't meet your sales goals, then you don't make as much money and you don't get that growth as well. And so with the stock market, there's a wide range of possibilities on how much money you can make from the growth of the stocks that you own, or how much money you can make from the dividends that a company would pay if you were to hold that stock. And the next major asset class, which is gonna be a major asset class for us in the future, it wasn't something that even existed over 20 years ago, and that's cryptocurrencies. Now with cryptocurrencies, there are a large, a wide variety of different types of cryptocurrencies. Most people know the main, the larger cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or even Dogecoin, even though it was you know made as a joke, it is something that is very popular and a lot of people have invested in. But also with cryptocurrencies, you even have stable coins, which essentially mirror the US dollar, and you can actually earn a high growth rate, a higher rate that you would earn from a traditional savings account from you know, one of the big four banks or, may, or other financial institutions, which at best you may be able to get a 3% interest rate. And there are some savings accounts that I've reviewed in the past that you can check those out. But with owning a stable coin as a cryptocurrency, you can actually earn up to 8% by holding a stable coin instead of holding USD and essentially have the same level of risk that you would have when holding your cash in your savings account. But on the other end of the spectrum, you could invest in some really super high growth or super high volatile cryptocurrency, which could you know gain 1200% in a month, but it could also lose 90% in a couple of days. And so there's a wide array of potential outcomes, even when investing in cryptocurrencies. And so I would consider this like playing a high impact sport or maybe like an extreme sport. Maybe you're in the X Games, maybe you're rock climbing. These are sports where you could potentially get injured, but they're fun. They may work your muscles more than you know other sports, but you also have that potential of injuring yourself or potentially dying if you're in one of those really extreme sports. Or in the case of cryptocurrencies, you could gain a lot of money or you could lose a lot of money in a short period of time. But if you know what you're doing, and you've done your research and you've done things to protect yourself, then it could be really fun and also very rewarding. And so as far as a job, I will compare this to entrepreneurship. Most people are gonna fail when they have a, their own business. Over 90% of people fail within the first two years if when they own a business. And so cryptocurrencies would be more like being an entrepreneur and starting your own business. Again, with starting your own business, there's a wide range of possibilities. You could end up being the next Fortune 500 company, or you could always have maybe a mom and pop shop that just you know lasts for the next 20, 40 years, but it never really gets really big. Or you could fail and you could lose your money or potentially get big and then go bankrupt in the near future. You never really know with entrepreneurship. And so as an entrepreneur, you're taking on that risk. You're taking on a lot of risk, especially in the beginning when you're starting off because you don't know for sure how that company could end up and how much money you're gonna make or how much time and effort you're gonna have to put in to make that business work. Now, just like with cryptocurrencies, if you don't even know what a cryptocurrency is or you're just following someone on social media and investing in what they're investing in and not actually taking the, your own time to do the research to learn more about those cryptocurrencies, then you could get in a situation where you could lose money as well. But out of those five asset classes, once you compare them to exercises or maybe even having an active job, there's a wide array of outcomes that could happen depending on what you choose to do with your money. Of course, you want to spread it out. You want to be more diversified and have money in all types of different asset classes. Even some of the ones that I didn't mention that would be considered alternate investing, like investing in maybe precious metals like gold and silver, or maybe in, even investing in a startup company, which would then be more in line with the entrepreneurship uh, job or extreme sport method. But in either case, it's good to stay active. It's good to stay active and exercise your money. It's good to stay active and give your money a job. That way you can benefit from it in the future, just like benefiting from exercising on a regular basis, it will be beneficial for your health 10, 20, 30 years from now. So stay healthy and busy by giving your money multiple jobs, 
giving yourself multiple streams of income, or by keeping a regular varied exercise routine, whether we're talking about your actual body or we're talking about your money exercising. And just like with your body, you never wanna overdo it in any particular category. You wanna take breaks and you want to exercise all of your muscle groups and not over-focusing on one muscle group, which could then overextend your muscles and you could get injured and hurt yourself. That can happen with your money as well. All right, now that you've watched this video, let us know in the comments below how you exercise your money or what jobs you give your money. Are you putting your money in all of the five asset classes that I mentioned in this video? And for the asset classes that I didn't mention, where else are you putting your money to help it exercise or to give it a job to do? All right, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so be notified the next time I create a video just like this. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.